so the jury members are commenting only the startups like a, a The thing that I love about the Wise Guys team is that you guys have a knack for finding the most passionate founders. They, they, they know what they're doing, they believe in what they're doing, and nothing is going to stop them. Uh, it is really intense, I have to say, but I really enjoy it because I, I feel every day I'm totally involving uh, in this program, and, and I see that I have so many weapons already. It's challenging at times. We come with a strong background of doing a lot of things at once, uh, but it's just amazing to be next to the teams, showing all the creativity you can to help them. So it's not something you have to deliver. It's very creative work, uh, and that's what I'm very surprised that I really like it. I think the best of the, peop the, the people part always. You already know everything, but here the borders are infinite. Just so much things to learn. One of them is the passion and the other one is how much we care about each other. Among everything, we are a team that really likes to spend time with each other, and part of that is because we all share the mission. Because I always had the feeling that this is uh, the family that I have. This is not a job, this is what we love to do. I think when you can mix that one, it's great. We just have to sometimes understand that, hey, there is more people around us that we have to put some time for them. For, for us, it was mainly like a Crash Course Startup MBA basically kind of. It is kind of like a bottle of good wine, uh, kind of that keeps getting better all the time. But... I mean, uh, Wise Guys team is what keeps me energized through everyday life. When I started working with the startup scene, Wise Guys was my kind of entryway, so I feel like it's a family. I'm like an adopted startup wise girl. <laughs> I just remember one scene from the from the Czech Chill uh, two months ago when you had the, the demo day with Swiftbank. They were nearly all the startups were nearly crying when they said goodbye to the mentors. You know they can really feel the, the energy and I think culture beats everything. And and and, and uh, I also see Wise Guys as an execution machine. Yeah, and people ask uh, why do you do that? Uh, there is no money and and very many accelerators have failed after a year or two. I believe that if you really want to do it, if it's your vision, and uh, then you just can't give up and you will figure it out how it, how it works. And you have to pitch at the big stage, right? Yes, yes. My hands are already shaking. It's too easy for us because uh, this whole month start our wise guys, every day we're pitching. It's, it's easy for us. Now we are only going up and up and only the sky is the limit. This love for what we do at the end of the day and this is our life that we want to have. I already know that when it's over then I'm going to cry. Three minutes of uh, station now back to work. <laughs> So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you today to Wise Guys SAS Demo Day. Um, my name is Andra, and together with a wonderful team, I have been running this acceleration program for the past four months. 
Today, it's my honor to be here to introduce the 11 teams that have completed the acceleration program and are ready for their next big steps. But before we begin, um, we have a very special guest here today with us, uh, the CEO of Startup Wise Guys, Cristobal Alonso, who would like to say a couple of words to the teams and to all of you who are here with us. So Cristobal, <laughs> are you ready? Yes, i always ready. Uh, yeah, well said, Andra. I think it was also touching to see the video. For those of you who might not know, that was a lot of people that from the first batch with, with Lithuania almost two and a half years ago. It feels like an eternity, also because at that time we could get together and spend the whole time together. Uh, but we've been thrown a lot of, uh, let's say, tough curve balls, if you talk about baseball, uh, COVID, the adaptation, uh, and I'm very proud about uh, how the team, uh, both from the in Lithuania and overall, the entire team has adapted to a new world, has managed to keep delivering lots of value for you. Today, even in Vilnius, Dag is there. So we, we adapted to the world, and you have to adapt to the world. Um, always saying goodbye to the batch has this little, as Janika says, I know when the batch is finished, we're going to cry. I think we all cry a little bit because we have spent very intensively almost live with you, even if these days we live online with you more than on site, unfortunately. Um, so it's a bit of sadness there, but this is the, the exciting part also for us. Uh, we don't disappear. Uh, you know, uh, Again, seeing the video, I have talked to all those people more than three or four times uh, on a yearly basis on the stop. I see those some of them doing pre-seed rounds, seed rounds. So now the time for you is to, to walk in a different path, hopefully in an accelerated path, uh, to go to the next uh, rounds of funding, revenues, hiring, uh, but we're here for you. So we will be bugging you to keep reporting because that allows us to know what you're doing. But we're also uh, there for you to celebrate great things. And I know we will be hearing great things about all of you, or many of you, but we're also here when it's time to, to cry on when it's time to doubt or when you feel challenges, right? So that's when we're especially here for you. That's why we start away this a bit different. We're only there, not only for the teams that are making it to the top, but for the founders who are doing the best, but they face difficulties, right? So please always call us at those moments. We have a, a, a shoulder to cry or a head to think or a counterpoint to what you're thinking about. As long as you're giving your best, that's what we expect for you. Some of you will be the moon, some of you will be back to the starting line. But if you do your best, fantastic. We believe in you as a founder, that's all we expect from you. So thank you again to Andra and to the team for the batch. Thank you to the 11 teams uh, here, to the 40, 45 teams we have invested in Lithuania. This is a special batch because we committed to four batches and we have we finished. It's super proud that we have invested in 45 teams and they're, they're doing all amazing. And today you become part of those 45 teams. Today you become alumni in, in the sense of the world and you're going to actually start calling us with great news, I'm sure about that. So thank you everybody. Um, pitch well, you know, this is something you keep doing for the next 10 years. So, you know, don't think you got rid of pitching, sorry, bad news. You keep pitching again and again and again. Uh, but you know, and remember that uh, leadership is a privilege. Pressure is a privilege. Uh, so just enjoy it uh, and take it as an amazing opportunity that you have in your hands to receive investor money, employees trust, uh, and you're following your passion. So thank you, everybody. Andra, back to you. Thanks so much, Cristobal. Very well said. Um, the journey ahead of the startups uh, will be full of ups and downs, right? But, um, but we are happy to, to be a part of it. So since we have a lot of people here who haven't heard about the program and about the teams, I would like to show a small presentation. I know that everyone is excited about the pitches, but I just want to say a couple of words about what has happened and um, what the teams have actually achieved as a group uh, during the past four months. So um, I will be sharing my screen uh, and I'll show a short presentation. I hope it will not take too long. So everything has started um, 
back in February, I would say, when we uh, started to look for teams for this acceleration program. And actually, the teams that are here today were selected among more than 400 startups that we have either approached or that we have received applications for this particular program. So all of them narrowed down to 24 teams that participated in the selection bootcamp in the beginning of June. And from them, uh, we have selected 11 teams that you will meet today. And these are the teams. I will not uh, go into too much detail about uh, presenting them because we will do this uh, today uh, during the event. But maybe some of the names are already familiar to you. Uh, maybe you have heard about them before. So keep your eyes open. And this is how everything started. Uh, as Cristobal has said, um, due to COVID, we had to run this program uh, online, but we did it in a hybrid way. So some of the teams were sitting here in Vilnius, Lithuania together with us, while others have joined the program fully online. Uh, but I'm very glad that all of the teams actually had a chance to visit us. And um, we have met them during the progress day. Uh, so, so it was a really cool event uh, where the teams have pitched and presented their progress to a, I would say, friendly group of investors and to the close community. Uh, so today is the big day for them. You know, it's the first time they are really exposed um, in, in such a public event. So the acceleration program itself lasted for uh, 17 weeks. So, so that's roughly uh, three to four months, right? And during this time, uh, the expectation was that, you know, we will begin the program, uh, we'll have this progress day, and then everything will end um, uh, on October 21st. So a very smooth ride, uh, correct? But uh, the reality was quite different. Along the road, we had many sideways, we had to move sideways, you know, we were sidetracked. Uh, sometimes we moved uh, one step forward and two steps backwards. So it was a hell of a ride for everyone, for our team and for the startups, but we are very happy that we have reached the end of the program and today the teams are ready to present what they have done. So let's take a look at what has happened during this ride. We have warmed up the office. Like I said, the teams had a chance to actually be here with us. So we moved into a new space. Um, we bought all the furniture and everything, and we were very, very much looking forward to welcoming the teams here. Um, during the program, we had lots of good calls and have been visited by the alumni a lot, which was a real pleasure because the teams had a chance not only to connect between themselves, but also to learn from the alumni uh, who have shared their experience uh, in running the companies and fundraising or, you know, in general on their mental health and how to survive while you are running a startup. And in addition to that, of course, we had quite a few kick-ass parties uh, where we all connected on a different level and learned about each other from a personal point of view. So I think that these were definitely some of the highlights uh, of the program, at least for me. So uh, we can also take a look in, um, at the program in numbers. So during the past four months, the teams have participated in more than 50 workshops. Uh, they have met uh, with more than 50 mentors. They pitched a lot. Uh, we say that it's roughly 80 times that they have pitched, but nobody is sure. I heard that some of the startups will, were preparing and pitching until 3, 4 a.m. this morning, so the number might actually be higher. And of course, you know, lots of coffee, coffee cups that were drank here in the office. And uh, if we take a look at the progress that the teams have done, so um, in the beginning of September, they have hired 15 new team members. And today we count that 25 new people have joined the teams. So it's roughly two uh, new team members for each startup. Uh, we are very, very happy about that. Also, the teams had lots of sales calls. Uh, so by now they had roughly 700 uh, sales calls, which translates into you know, something like 70 calls per team. Uh, and uh, right now they have uh, about 3,700 paying clients. So quite a big progress that has been done during the program uh, on this side. Some of the startups uh, are running um, a kind of like a B2C business model, right? So we also have lots of users uh, that they have onboarded. 
And by today, we are counting that there are more than 100,000 users that our companies have. Um, so I think it's an awesome achievement, really. And that's it. So, you know, this is the accumulated story about us, about the past four months and about the teams. But of course, you will hear all of it bit by bit today from each team separately. And uh, you will be able to learn, OK, so who are the front runners, you know, who have added the most clients and the most users. So I'm very, very excited about actually starting the part <laughs> uh, of the pitching. So we'll say a couple of words um, so that everyone understands how we will do this. Uh, the pitches will be split into three groups. Uh, in each group, we will have a dedicated jury to ask questions. The startups will have three minutes for the pitch and uh, we will have roughly five minutes for the Q&A. So I'm very sorry if I will have to stop you at some point, but I hope that if you still have more questions, we can you know, trans transfer the discussion into a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, with the startups. Now, for those who are watching the stream on YouTube, it doesn't mean that you cannot participate. So feel free to type your questions over there in the chat. And I'm sure that the founders uh, will be able to answer them uh, on the stream. So now I would like to introduce the first group of startups and the jury. So I'll begin with the jury. And uh, I would like to welcome uh, Hilary Pops, the CEO uh, at Honey Badger Capital. So nice to see you here, Hilary. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Also here with us today is uh, Premis Rubis, the managing partner at Presto Ventures. Hey, good to see you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. And um, last but not least, Carol Shubstarsky, uh, who is an investment director at OTB Ventures. Hey, Carol. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to see all of you here today with us. So the first startup to pitch today is, is Lucid. And I would like to say a couple of words about them. So we at Startup Wise Guys really love working with product-driven startups. And when we first heard about Islucid, we were so intrigued about the technology that we actually had doubts whether it really works. But Vitanis and his team have cleared up all of these doubts during the very first meeting. Because instead of having just a regular call, we had a great conversation and also tested the product during the call. So that was a new experience for us. And um, during the batch, we have done this several times. You know, we tested the product together with the founders, with the teams, with the mentors. And I have to say that it just keeps on getting better and better. And while testing it, we also managed to have a lot of fun. So Without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Vitanis, the CEO and co-founder of Islucid, to tell you more about what they are building. Hello, I'm really pleasure to be here. Uh, sorry if I'm being a bit nervous, but you know, it's a challenge, it's adrenaline pumping me up and so on, because it's a sad day. We are finishing the accelerator, but we are super happy to be here. And we will look forward what is happening will happen for us in the future so let me share my screen please share and i'm with Anis, a ceo of Lucid, and i do believe that all conversations should end up with actionable items but who likes taking notes i don't verbally I express myself way better with more details and so on however with written tasks meeting minutes and so on, I don't cover such level of details. And as a manager, when I'm planning a one hour meeting, actually I'm adding at least 15 minutes to do the follow-ups, task delegation and so on. And I'm not a saint, I cannot move the task. I'm not contributing to this conversation while on the call. And with this lucid, we are bringing you voice to text to actionable items in, on conference calls in real time with AI assistance. Look, it's super easy. You're having a team call. On the right hand, you're seeing our recommendations for its potential actionable item. You can select your own front transcription and just, just by a click, store in your task management software, either it's Jira and so on. And the users are loving it. We have more than 350 organizations who came and found us. We secured first paying customers and we have a strong pipeline of large organizations. We are having weekly calls with Microsoft to support us because we are helping to everybody on cross-functional teams. We are selling and approaching them on marketplace of teams 
through the software review websites, and we're doing outreach through LinkedIn and email. Because what we offer as a SaaS subscription for meetings or unlimited enterprise pass model for price per seat, it's really suitable for our target audience. Because otherwise, we would be using internal workforce. We could use transcribers or transcription software. We will find some advanced solutions like Otter, Firefly, and Note who are providing when a meeting is finished recommendations. While us, we are focusing to have your smooth experience while meetings running. With our founding team, we always are on the terms of actionable items. Gintas was doing sales for Watergraph and he couldn't be a top performer without making sales closed. Closed. Gabby and me, well, I say it's project management, product management, and so on. It's always about execution and ensuring that meetings are on most convenient method. We are backed up by uh, Startup Wise Guys and Callista Ventures, and we're happy to have support from external advi extraordinary advisors who help us to navigate, navigate in the US market. Now I'm standing in front of you to start a conversation and make it actionable so we could start in March to raise a new seed round of around 1 million. We want for you to bring a new solution experience where it's not only about assistance on how to capture the actionable items, what we offer now, but also how to make sure that you get the context, you understand what kind of impact, impact the created task will have, and that we would expand further from the teams. 250 million monthly active users, it's not enough for us. Let's make this conversation actionable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vitana. Yes, let's do that. Let's make, um, let's make it actionable. So, Jury, do we have some questions for Vitana? Sure. Um, I, I can go first. Um, awesome presentation. Didn't see you being nervous at all. So, good job. Uh, yeah, I guess that as we are using, at least here, Zoom, uh, first question would be naturally, uh, do you plan to extend to other environments besides Teams, meaning Google Meet, Zoom, and others? I, I guess that would be the first question. And what's the timeline? Yeah. Yeah, so there are multiple layers uh, to have conversations on. It's not only about video conferencing, but now what we are seeing are new opportunities for conference calls on standard mobile phone and so on. So now we have some talks with WebEx, Cisco, because we are providing offerings to uh, mobile phones providers, telecom sector. And in addition, we are exploring other platforms. But we cannot compromise the security. And with Teams, we are getting daily usage about actionable items. While Zoom, you are closing it once meeting is finished. So it's more about actionable items and ensure your productivity. Where we are seeing Slack, Teams, Google Meets as next moves. And for timeline, that's why we will be raising on March. Yeah, I also have a question. Thanks, Vitenis, for the presentation. Uh, looks really good. I'm glad that you have the first uh, paying customers already. I was wondering uh, what their feedback has been, though, so far. You know, for me, as a product-driven founder, I'm always looking what next, what will be happening to the next level, what kind of added value we can create. The main, uh, how to say it, counted answer for the feedback is our actionable items. How much we are creating. Not only about the transcript, but actionable items. So we have currently more than 4,000 action items created till this day by our current customers. It shows we are creating value because if it would be only transcription software, it would be a different sector. What we are seeing and what will be the next exclusive version, it's about also storing some audio and ensure some bookmarks like items so you could come back to specific parts of conversation. So we actively listen to our customers. But the initial approach is good enough because we're paying us money. Uh, hi, hi, Vitanis. Uh, congrats on the progress. Uh, uh, we've seen each other a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. So congratulations on that. Uh, my question might be uh, the kind of obvious one about the privacy. So um, I, I, I'm not liking being recorded during the meetings. Like what, what about this feedback and what about like the challenges that you are meeting uh, within your customers? It's, it's a really great question and it's really important to understand that without being secure, you cannot 
ensures that companies will let us in because we, we are trusting to us our own privacy. About that, it depends if we are speaking about Europe or United States. We have customers in both markets. For United States, we are having less hesitation about the storage and more about security concerns in the terms of data security, encryption, uh, data isolation, and so on, which is already implemented and built into our system. With Europe, yes, uh, data is super important and sensitive in terms of uh, GDPR, about personal data. And for that, we are informing people about transcription happening. Transcription itself is less demanding in comparison to audio recordings. So, you know, you can walk away and tell it was just a glitch with transcription. And another thing is about uh, it's business conversations. So for, if it would be personal or sensitive data about your healthcare information, health information and so on, to be, to, it would be more concerned. But for now, we are letting our customers know, please don't use super sensitive data with our software. And in addition, we are working on a compliance API. So your compliance team could extract this information and ensure that it's being wiped out. Maybe. Right. Um, oh, sure. Go do, ahead. Do we, have, do we have time? Yes, one more yeah. question. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, so maybe one more, one more question. You have showed in a pitch deck some of the competitors in a, in a space, in a, a speech to text yeah. space. But your uniqueness, I guess, lies within a, uh, something different, your ability to turn text into the actionable items, right? My question would be, do you see like the guys like Otter, which is, which is quite sizable already, more like competitor, uh, competitor, or maybe you could use them as a channel to basically provide additional feature on top of their transcri transcription suit? I think this is a channel, and the uniqueness about this Lucid is, yes, our machine learning engine is just doing uh, data analysis and uh, categorizing and finding out where it's actionable item, where it's not actionable. So it doesn't matter who is providing us a transcription. It's more how accurate our models are. And we have some secret source how to, how to ensure that our training of algorithm is way faster than the standard approach uh, in data science. And I think with the usage, it will be not about is it author or is it lucid? But it will be more, okay, it's lucid meeting assistant, how it can expand on author's data. So yes, we can Absolutely. add that. Absolutely, that, that was my point. Like get, get embedding your solution to the players that have already sizable audience in transcription business would enable you to supercharge overnight. So I guess that, that sounds like a way to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vitanis. Thanks, Jury. Uh, thank you for the questions. And uh, now we will move on to the next team uh, that is Abowire from Germany. So um, the majority of the teams that we work with, we find them through direct outreach, you know, events, referrals, uh, and similar. But sometimes we do have some very high quality applications in our deal room as well. And Abowire Wire was exactly one of those cases. Uh, during the evaluation process, our geek and officer typically reviews the product, you know, the code and how everything is built. And when he was reviewing the product of Abowire, he said that, you know, not working with this team would actually be a big sin. So that's why we thought, you know, okay, let's give it a go. We talked to the team. We really like the founders. We love the dynamic between them. And I'm very glad that they also decided that they want to work with us. So fun fact, you know, although Abowire is from Germany, both of the founders are from Latin America. So <laughs> Alan, are you ready for the pitch? Yes, I am. Thank you, Andrew, for the kind intro. Uh, one moment, I'll share my screen. All right, can you guys see it? Yes, all good. Cool. All right, so I'll get started. Hi there, my name is Alan Reed, and I'm the CEO of Abowire. Uh, our company is based in Berlin, and our goal is to shape the future of subscriptions. Subscriptions uh, are like the text industry um, go to business model, and it seems like everybody is growing with them nowadays, right? 
Um, the thing is, as more non-tech companies start to join in the party, the more companies struggle to do it right. And I've seen that firsthand as a consultant with many of them. There are millions in lost revenue and super sad user experiences just because not everybody has the know-how to integrate all the moving parts. And honestly, I can't just let this happen. Uh, since I was a kid, uh, my passion has been building things and enabling others to build stuff as well. Uh, so this is why we have spent the last year working on this. We, we enable non-technical people to effortlessly implement subscriptions in their landing pages and their websites and their apps so that I can grow, so that they can grow their business without any code. We give them everything they need from login systems to registration systems to payments and customer portals. And unlike our competitors, we are laser focused on product and marketing people. We want to become a technology partner they can rely on. But let me tell you about our secret weapon. We're also building behind the scenes a, a network. Every subscriber that our customers bring into Abowire gets to subscribe faster with our other customers. Eventually, you won't need to enter your information anywhere ever again. Uh, and Abowire will become the subscribe button of the web a button with the power of connecting people and transforming businesses. We're also monetizing our product from day one. And this is very important to me. We charge our customers with our usage based subscription, depending on the amount of subscribers that they have. And these customers are mainly product people from the DAC area since we are based in Berlin. Most of them come through inbound and have the specific intent of uh, implementing subscription models. And so far, their response has been really great. In the past month, uh, in the past year, uh, we already made 80,000 euros with our product. And we believe that this is just nothing compared to what it could be. We're targeting an expanding market of 4.5 billion euros in Europe alone. So just imagine how intense this could be in 10 years. Each one of us has uh, over a decade of building software. We've worked together for years. We have hundreds of products in our belt uh, and we have what it takes to make it happen. This is why we're raising 500K to get it to 50,000 euros an hour and raise a seed round next year. I'm happy to answer any of your questions and invite you to get in touch with me and join us shaping the future of subscriptions. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you so much for the pitch. Jury, we are ready for your questions. Perhaps I'll start. Uh, thank you, Alan, for this presentation. It looks uh, really cool, and I haven't seen ideas like this uh, on the market yet. But my question would be, what are your main challenges currently? Right. So one of our key challenges uh, at this stage is that we are mostly, as you've seen in our, in our deck earlier, uh, we're mostly tech and product people, and we want to bring in someone more on the on the sales and marketing side as well so to help us on that, uh, that stage. So this is something we're also doing in the, in the next few months. Could you, could you, hi, Alan, uh, uh, thanks for the presentation, hi. very, very nice. Could you give us a, like more an example of, of, of your like typical customer or ideal customer, or you are now talking to like, uh, an example yeah so i can give you like a concrete example we have for instance uh, a company that they are uh, an e-learning company and they sell uh, basically b2b workshops these are like high-end workshops for uh for other companies and these are really big companies these are all dax companies that they have as customers so they're really high quality uh, uh, workshops and they're using our tool to basically uh, onboard all these uh, end users that they have. So the employees of companies and basically to uh, manage all the licenses that they, that they sell. Uh, and yeah, they, they integrate it kind of as a single sign-on solution to log in and so that they can also manage their accounts and so on. So it's quite a broad uh, integration in that case. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, so, so, so maybe just a quick question from my side. Who would you consider the the, the closest com uh, competition in uh, in that space for you? Um, that's an interesting question because we, um, I mean, and and the subscription management side uh, would be like companies like Chargebeat, for instance, uh, would be competitors. Uh, but they're also focusing on like a, in a different segment. So they're more on like RevOps and sales and, and that kind of side. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're more about automating uh, and streamlining, streamlining uh, processes. Um, so in that case, we are focusing more on product and, and marketing people. So more on the acquisition side of things instead of on the back end. So, so in terms of like being on the front end, providing end-to-end -end subscription embeddable platform, like including like the front end customer acquisition funnel and uh, payment options, you are basically, uh, you have the first mover advantage. Here. Pretty much. Uh, we, there are other uh, companies as well, like for instance, uh, you know, Stripe that has components like this, uh, but um, Stripe is a developer company. They're, 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 you need to have developers, you need to have a tech team. So we, this is something we also want to stress out is that we want to uh, be, a, we want to enable uh, non-technical people to, to do this as well. That is why it's a drag and drop, right? No code. Yes. Platform. Yeah. Got it. So maybe a follow-up question about unit economics, because one of the components of the solution, as far as I understand, is a payment infrastructure, right? So the ability for the user to to choose from set number of, of payment gateways. Do, yeah. uh, I guess my question is around unit economics, meaning if you have set subscription price for, for the platform, it means that it is basically being undercut by the transaction fees of the payment gateways or users are basically, or merchants are, are basically having direct contract with payment gateway providers. Exactly, it's, it's the second one. So we uh, mm -hmm. implement many payment gateways like Stripe and we're actually verified uh, Stripe partners as well. Uh, and you use your own Stripe account uh, and you pay Stripe the fees directly. And in that case, you know, it's your okay. arrangement Got with it. Stripe. So there is no impact. Awesome, okay, no, thank you. No at all. All right, so Alan, thank you so much for the pitch. Thanks thank for- you the answers to tough questions that are coming from the jury. Jury, keep it up. <laughs> uh, you're doing really well. So um, now let's move on to the third startup of today, uh, which is Bumio from Lithuania. So the first person from our team to talk to Bumio and to Jonas was actually Dimitri. And uh, after having the first call, he was so excited that he immediately scheduled the second call. I think it even was on, this, on the same week uh, with the rest of our team. And, uh, you know, we thought, okay, let's talk, sure, uh, interesting product. Uh, but then after talking to Jonas and after seeing the demo of the product, we immediately understood why Dimitri was so excited. Because the team was experienced, the product was super funky, and they were targeting one of the biggest industries worldwide. So we are very happy to work with you, Team Bumio. Now, Jonas, the CEO and co-founder of Bumio, is here to tell you more about what they are building. Jonas, are you ready? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, dear investors, dear audience, um, it's good to be here. And let me share my screen. I hope you see it. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go. Yeah, so as Andrew mentioned, um, I'm Jonas from Bumio team, and what we do is actually uh, making the sales grow and the customer acquisition platform for consumer good market, which is basically FMCG. And uh, let me start with you know real examples what we have already done in the market, so it will be easy for you to understand. So we're launching product campaigns for the biggest brands uh, in the Baltic countries when users scan the code, play the game or answer the question about the product and give feedback. We're launching campaigns in the retail where in form of treasure hunt, et cetera, et cetera. And also we are launching e-shop campaigns since most of our customers are already multi-channel customers. And our task is to bring customers and, and increase sales in all the channels. 
So we are not solving like one problem, we are solving a range of the problem, reducing the cost, reducing time to market. And uh, we are obsessed about user experience and the quality for, for our customers. Uh, so the way we did, we, we did very simple, very digital and, and innovative with zero IT integration and no price distribution costs. And uh, we're actually launching really big campaigns within one day. Uh, and we already work with the biggest brands in the world uh, and local brands as well here in Baltic. And our ambition to be a, a global brand worldwide. And that this will be hardly possible without our team. Uh, we have perfect and, and, and I would say the most competent team uh, a company could have. And we are two founders, me and Adamas, who is our CTO, the, the geek, I would say. <laughs> and uh, the next level what we want to move is to move from campaign-based company to SaaS model. So uh, basically, we are already able to, to launch the whole campaign as you know off-the-shelf within five minutes across the three countries. Uh, uh, so basically we're moving from, from marketplace to SaaS company uh, at this moment to be able to operate in the bigger market. Uh, our current MRR is 70K euros uh, and uh, our target for next year is 100K euros. Uh, we will target uh, first Polish market and then we have ambition to be in US market. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, we are operating in the biggest market in the world, which is $1.5 trillion worth. But of course, our, our targeted market is around $170 billion when it comes to Polish and US market. Uh, so yeah, we analyze the competition in each country and uh, basically our task is start next year to be there. Uh, and this is what we are raising 700 euros. Uh, for for our development and our technology and um, yeah that's our ambition so thank you i hope i fit in the time yes you did thank you so much for the pitch Jonas. it was just on time so very well done uh jury we are ready for your questions uh, happy to ask uh, one again. Uh, thanks, Jonas, uh, for the presentation. I was wondering how much uh, customer research did you do before launching and uh, what did you learn? Uh, uh, you mean before launching Boomio? Yes. Yeah, so actually we met with the customers before the launching of Boomio. Uh, we asked what challenges they're facing, uh, what uh, uh, demand they have, when it comes because they are quite dependent on the price price discount campaigns and we wanted to change that that they will do less price discount campaigns and bring some fun innovative and truly engaging campaigns not without you know paper coupons or plastic cards etc and basically we received certain commitment before we even launched Humia. we launched in latin estonia uh, but we sold to customers before even launching a new market so so basically all our product was basically based on customer's feedback. And do you continue with that approach? Yep. yep. Actually, that's one of the reasons we, are, we, are, we want to be in a bigger market like Poland because uh, most of our current customer's headquarters are in Poland. And uh, actually we want to, to, so that they would refer to, to like a bigger market colleagues so they can launch it. We can launch in a bigger market. I hope it makes sense. So maybe I'm um, happy to follow up on with the next question. So as far as I understand, to this date, you acted, your platform acted as a channel for marketing campaigns, gamified uh, market, uh, marketing campaigns. And right now you're transitioning to the fully subscription model, right? The, the platform subscription model. Yes. Uh, may, makes it all sense because marketing campaign model has very many challenges including like seasonality and our uh, repeatability and ma management of the of, of the customers but but the question is how how would would it work in terms of subscription model it, does it mean that the customer like the brands you mentioned like uh, png gets access to your platform pays monthly subscription fee and basically gets direct access to facebook ads or or uh, how how would it work Okay, great and deep question. Um, uh, so 
some of, of our con contracts we have already today is uh, with marketing agencies. So when it comes to large customers, we want to work with market through marketing agencies and provide the software and the marketing bot part will be on their side. And uh, for smaller manufacturers and smaller distributors, we want to, to have like off the shelf platform where they can create the, uh, within five minutes and pay like $200 per month for, for constant subscription. So basically they can create the whole loyalty uh, platform for them by selecting what they need from the list. Okay, may, 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 makes sense and, and provides you to the bigger access to, to the customers through the, through the marketing agency. So it, it, it makes total sense. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one question from, from my side. Uh, is, isn't there a, a chicken and egg problem between like you having the platform with all the customers having the app and the phone? versus what you are basically selling to the B2B partners and B2B partners are basically buying this customer base, but you are, you are at the beginning, so the customer base is not yet built. So you need the big campaigns to attract new, new consumers to the, to the app. Like, so how you are solving this problem? Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, why, this is exactly why we started from campaign model, because it gave us chance to receive first revenues. Then we are, when we entering the new market, uh, the way we sell to customers, we commit to future result. For example, if PNG Procter Gamble is buying us in, for example, in Poland, and we don't have zero, we have zero customers there, we say that we will commit that like one hundred thousand customers will participate in the campaign at least. So the, we, first we get the customer and we will get the commitment. Uh, because otherwise it's pretty hard to, 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 to uh, convince. And the last part of the answer, we are running our own campaigns in the, in the beginning. For example, we are not running Twix campaign, we are running the whole chocolate category campaign. So you can scan your favorite chocolate, it sounds like this. And we, we receive the first customers ourselves, we are investing, and when we approach the customer, we said, look, we already have the customer base, we already have campaigns running, let's do something together. Okay, uh, I, I would be afraid about the lifetime value of the customer as you are at the risk to not bring the right results to the customers and then you are basically paying for the campaign yourself instead of your, your large, uh, uh, rich B2B customers. Yeah, this is why we, we don't want to stay in campaign-based model and we want to move to SaaS uh, business. So it's only like temporary exactly. to, to, to trans trans there to another business model. Yeah. Do you already have a, a subscription a prospect in your pipeline? Yes, we have actually the demo version of a sales service. We're working on that right now. Uh, and um, uh, part of the investment we're seeking will, will be dedicated to finish the, the sales service platform. And we have already customers who already want to test it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, thank you, Jory. Tough questions coming in. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Very good. All right. So now let's move to the last startup uh, from this first, first group, uh, which is Bitview tuning in from Finland. So about a month ago, uh, Bitview team was visiting us here uh, in Vilnius for the Progress Day. And uh, before the progress day, we went out for a couple of beers, you know, when we were chatting, okay, so how did the founders started their companies, what inspired them, what they did before. And while we were talking about this, we have learned that Whitview team has actually done another company before starting this one. So, you know, we were also intrigued. We asked a million questions, but the guys wouldn't, wouldn't lean in. Uh, and they were saying, you know, this is history. Let's not talk about it. Uh, let's close this book. So now we have this big cliffhanger in the air because none of us really know uh, what was the previous business. And I really hope that one day I will get this answer. So, <laughs> Jana, uh, I would like to welcome you to the stage and to tell us a bit more about the current business that you are doing together with other co-founders. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Always nice introduction <laughs> to put me on the spot. Can you see my screen? All right. So 
like Andrew mentioned, my name is Joona Forsen. I'm the founder of Vitview. And we help companies make more online sales by summarizing millions of product reviews from thousands of websites all around the internet. Um, so today, everybody understands the importance of reviews for e-commerce. We all read them before we do any purchases. And more than half of us are basically hesitating to buy if there is no reviews available. The problem, however, is that the only way to get the reviews is to collect it from your customers, which can take months before you have enough to actually make a difference. And any moment before you have enough, you are basically losing money every minute, every day. We have a bit different approach. So instead of focusing on collecting from the customers the reviews, we focus on the data that already exists in the world. We collect the data from over 30,000 websites, including stores like Amazon and Walmart, and experts reviews from sites like TechRadar or CNET. With the help of AI, we can analyze and summarize the key insights of the information directly on the product page of our customer. So instead of having no reviews at all, you can have thousands of reviews immediately. So far, we've been mainly working in the electronics industry where we have increased the sales on average by 7.5%. And we are now moving on to new verticals such as car dealerships, where the first pilot doubled the amount of leads that the customer was generating from the website. Currently, our monthly revenue is just over 7,000 euros. And we see very strong demand in the new verticals as the, the dealerships. In just one month, we had 15 demos, which resulted in five new paid pilots, which are actually ongoing as we speak. And this is a very good place to expand on. The competition is focused only on the user generated content, meaning that they help the customers to collect reviews from their customers. Whereas we, as I mentioned, we focus solely on the data that already is available. So there is no need to collect and wait which is especially important in case, cases like the dealerships who don't have the time or the tools to actually do it by themselves. So there really is no an alternative for this kind of players. Our team, like Andra said, we are actually, all the three founders are high schools. We are from the same high school and we did bankrupt the company before, but we are still in good terms, which I think tells you a lot about the team. Uh, combine it with the experience we have in the e-commerce and the partners, the best funds in the area, I think we have a pretty decent idea what we are actually getting ourselves into. We are opening the seed round in the end of the year for 500,000, which is to be used to really scale our operations in the verticals we are now and extend to new verticals that we can identify to reach 100,000 monthly revenue by the end of next year. My name is Joona Fors, the founder of Bitview, and we tell people what the internet thinks. That's what we do now. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions except regarding the previous company. That is still the same. Thank you. Hello, Pendula. Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Hilary. Sorry, yeah, I'll open the door to the questions. Uh, once again, thank you, Jona. I won't ask about your previous ventures, but I would like to know uh, what are the metrics that you measure to prove that you're doing well? Currently. Yes. Uh, basically, basically, but how we operate with every customer is that we are running A, B tests on their sites to understand what kind of influence do we actually make on their website. So we have built in a custom A, B test engine so we can, depending what the customer feels is important for them. Like in e-commerce, traditional e-commerce is pretty straightforward that you can just check how, how, the, how, how is the session length or what is the add to cart ratio or what are the sales conversion rates or what are the sales. So we can test those. And then if we talk about like the car dealerships are a bit more specific because, you know, some of them don't really make sales online yet. Some of them do. Uh, but then they can have different kind of metrics what they are analyzing, like how many people are applying for funding or kind of doing this kind of pre-requisitions -requis for the purchases. So uh, basically, we are. it depends on the customer what we are actually measuring, but we can do it all in our software to see the difference. That's why we can set the numbers, <laughs> because we, we can back it up with the data that we have on the test for. 
Could I ask about the value proposition, what you are exactly selling to your customers? Is it yes. the conversion part or is it the like information competency uh, value proposition? Like you are saying, hey, like we will be doing like all the data gathering and, and show it on in your website to increase the information for your customers or you are selling them the increased uh, uh, increased conversion rates? I would say that the, the short answer is the value, like the conversion rate as the value. Uh, and then the information is kind of means to an end. Like that's yeah, but, the tool, but, how you reach it. But, there in is, that case, but sorry, but in that yeah. case, the, the customer has the motivation to pay you a little bit more to tweak the reviews so that the conversion rate goes up, even though the reviews over the internet are not great, right? Yes. <laughs> so so is is this the direction you will you you are about to go to get paid more to tweak the uh to tweak the information so that the consumer gets uh gets some uh, like more we, we, uh, ready to buy we have had cases like we worked with Telia and, and, and they were <laughs> they actually wanted to only show positive reviews no negatives <laughs> at all and we were like well yeah, basically it's possible, but in the end, you know, the data shows that people also trust more if there is the negative information available, and that is kind of a big part of it. So the more transparent you are, the better results you actually end up getting. And we, we have kind of made the ethical choice that we don't want to manipulate the data too much. Like if there is, let's say a product has two bad reviews, like you don't really want to show it, then you know it's fine. You don't need to show anything at all. But I would, I, be, I don't want to go there. That hey, let's mon manipulate the data so that this shit product actually looks like it's the best ever, which is not, you know, that's not in my understanding of good yeah. business. Yeah, so but, yeah, but I, very, I wouldn't but, go there no. Yeah, but where is the kind of you know like it's it's still question of of where where is yeah. the right yeah. where is the right ratio of like hiding things and like being transparent yeah. versus yeah. getting uh, yeah. increased uh, uh, increased yeah. conversion. So yeah, and I for think me, I'm, in, I'm fine it, with it's... hiding all the information and then hiding nothing. Like that's yeah. that's perfectly fine for me. Like if somebody okay. don't want to show bad information, then don't show the good information for it either. Then it's the same as they wouldn't have any information yeah. available at all. And that's for me, it's fine. But if we go any deeper, then for me personally, that is not fine. I'm sure we can find people who are absolutely okay with it, but we are we are not. Okay, okay, uh, Jana, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting discussion on you know values in general. I would say right. So yeah. thanks, thanks for the pitch. Ethics of business. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I would like to thank the first group of startups and the first group of jury. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here and uh, I hope that you will stay with us uh, to listen to the remaining of the pitches. And now we are moving, in, we are moving to the second group uh, and I would like to begin by introducing the jury uh, that will be asking questions um, for the upcoming three startups. So the first one who is here with us today is Kasper Swamalainen, Investment Manager at Superhero Capital. Hey, Kasper. Hey, Andra. Great to be here. And the second jury member is David Rielski, uh, who is an associate at Speed Invest. Hey, David. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have both of you here with us. And now I would like to invite the first startup uh, from this group, to present what they are doing. And this is Team Contribute. So they have quite a wonderful story uh, about how they started and about the team that's behind Contribute. We really love working with founders who are true entrepreneurs at heart. And um, I believe that Contribute is a great example of that. We have first heard about them um, a couple of years ago when they came up with the idea during a hackathon. And back then, uh, the main founder of the startup, Adrius, he was actually only 15. Uh, he was so passionate about doing this startup and bringing his idea to life that he invited Gediminas, 
who will be pitching uh, Contribute today, and the other co-founders. And uh, to make it even more fabulous, Adris actually took a gap year in high school to run this company and to make Contribute uh, the next big startup. So I'm very, very happy that you guys are here with us today. And I would like to invite Gediminas, the CEO of Contribi, to tell us more about what they are doing. Gediminas, are you ready? Yes, thank you. I'll try to, good day everyone. I'll try to share, but I have some issues with sharing my screen. Maybe someone can jump and help me. One second, please. Sorry, some issues because they're asking for system preferences. Yes, you know, it's, it's, it's been a couple of years of COVID, but still technical issues do not disappear. <laughs> do you need some help? Uh, get them yeah, one, one second. Okay, so I see that we have um, we have someone helping get them in us. I'm sure that we will get this fixed soon, um, and uh, and I hope that we will have the pitch running at, in no time. But um, I remember when we were um, helping our startups, you know, with the pitches. We would um, back in the day when they used to pitch in real on-site events. We would always tell them, you know, okay, so practice the clicker, practice holding a microphone. Uh, practice pitching if the slides are not there or if something gets mixed up because it would always happen in live events and in conferences. So I think that this is also a, a new addition that we should add to the pitch trainings, you know, how to test uh, if you can share your screen, how to test your microphone before pitching <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the rest, you know. So it doesn't matter if it's virtual or if it's on site, um, the challenges of um, the challenges remain basically. So, get them in us. Uh, how is it going? Keep us posted. Oh, I see that the slides are up. Beautiful. Get them in us, are you ready? Yes, thank you for waiting. Sorry for the issues. Okay, we are here. So, I'm Gedimenas Saskatch, CEO and co founder of Contribi, the land where creators enable payment collection to encourage their activities. So, What's the problem and opportunity behind? As you can see from competitors' popularity map, there are markets where creators already start collecting subscriptions, but there are plenty of un uh, unfollowed lands, not educated markets, which will come after. Creators without monetization tools, they are drowning. Also, they are spending their own money for necessary tools. So that's where Contribute stands in. In example, our famous local YouTuber, Babelis, he is able to collect subscriptions to unlock this unique content also sell his branded merch and even collect one-time donations under one roof. Isn't that amazing? Our currently targeted audience are video creators, podcasters, fitness coaches. Other verticals come just after behind. Going more deeply to market uh, creators economy, there are already 50 million creators worldwide. Currently, we are approaching UK and then US English speaking markets because they have the biggest reach. Afterwards, we will approach less educated markets with local language. Of course, we are giving comfortability for our creators because we take care of them and we are charging all the subscribers with 10% on top of the pledge. Looking into the competition background, uh, we have taken aggressive seats with my mention of pricing for fast expansion and even 95% of creators, uh, they are struggling to earn enough on other platforms. That's why we are building creators community to keep the balance and trap them inside our platform. Our results so far before, before entering UK, as you can see left chart with the donations, we have two stars when two famous local YouTubers joined the platform and they visibly increased our monthly recurring donation. On the right side, you can see user database, which was also visibly and positively impacted with digital marketing uh, campaign launched in August. These two slides are connected. So how we'll go to UK. Uh, 
naturally we will combine our best experiences so far uh, we already have six agreements with our flagmans youtubers in uk while we have only two in lithuania we will combine them with positively tested digital marketing campaigns for best scaling opportunities when we will have success cases we will become capable to switch creators from other platforms which we are successfully doing in lithuania and the cherry on top we will participate in the uk youtubers conference next month so everything will then live will go live in november so it will multiply our traction our team consists of 10 amazing members uh three not the first time co-founders leading the team also we have experts covering the most important part uh, at this stage marketing next stop for country b is 10,000 creators with 50k mrr in just 18 months for that, we need 1 million of investment, which is planned to be open in first quarter. And I believe we'll make it in a very short time. Thank you. And don't miss an opportunity to become a part of new chapter. Thank you, Gedimenas. Thank you so much for the pitch. I'm very glad that we managed to bring the slides uh, on Likewise. screen. <laughs> so all good on that end. Uh, Jury, we are ready for your questions now. So I have a few questions. Sure, I, I can kick off. Or go ahead. Go ahead, David. First of all, like, what, how do you plan to make money? Is it taking a cut from the donations or is it a SaaS fee to, to, to the creators? Is it uh, pay as you go combined with the amount on donation, the percentage, 10 percentage of donation? Okay. And are you currently integrating with any of the content platforms like Twitch or YouTube or any of the platforms that they, they host? The no, content? we are like standalone platform by us. Okay, because there's a bunch of the bunch of kind of donation platforms that are already integrating with like Twitch and, and all the other streaming platforms, right? So it's super easy for uh, for um, for the, the people that are watching it to, to, to donate. Whereas in your case, you'd have to go to a different website and, and that is obviously a bit more tricky, right? Yeah, but they are like receiving donations on Twitch and we have our own creators and non-profit organizations and other organizations who are using our platform as a primary platform to collect those donations from totally different verticals, which we even didn't know that they exist. So we'll take those ones who have the best reach. Oh, and you also mentioned uh, that, that nonprofits use your platform as well. So could you give a kind of creator story or an example of a nonprofit who's currently using your platform and how are they using it? Yeah, our biggest uh, organization collecting money is by nonprofit organization because they were receiving like monthly donations uh, in directly into their bank account. Now they can have subscriptions. So they have like 3,000 euro fixed, so they can plan their budget and it's additional value for them. And it's easy to convince other nonprofits. So they can plan their budget because they have subscriptions, monthly subscription, not one-time donations into the bank account. Oh, so, so, so the ba main value proposition for, for the nonprofit side is that they'll, they'll get donations. Do, do they use it in any other way to... Of course, they are receiving one-time donations, um, monthly subscriptions. They are making bank statements on the platform visible, so they will be like clearly where they are spending the money. You know? uh, also, they are able to use the merch. They can sell their like hoodies and donate that money. So they are using different kind of features, which will be very uh, challenging for them to develop by themselves. All right. Thank you. The nonprofits are the, the kind of the main group that you target, or is there anyone else? And now, as I mentioned, we are targeting YouTubers, uh, podcasters, and fitness coaches at the moment. Uh, but nonprofit organizations are like side, side vertical. And how do you like? Okay, they are coming like organically. You know, when they see that there are possibilities to collect donations uh, in some public cases, they join us. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Jury, for the questions. Thank you, Gedeminas, for the pitch. Um, tough questions coming in again. So very good. Let's keep this up. <laughs> and uh, now I would like to invite the second startup uh, from this group to pitch, uh, which is Vocal Image. So here in the Baltics, we have a very good podcast about startups, which is called The Pursuit of Scrappiness. Uh, if you haven't listened to it yet, uh, please make sure to listen to at least one episode. I'm sure that you will love it. 
But when I think about vocal image, I believe that they are one of the best examples of a scrappy startup. They have validated the need for the product via YouTube. They have built a simple MVP from their savings and they grew the user base without any prior investment. And now the guys have closed their first pre-seed investment. So just imagine what they can do with this first funding. Uh, the sky's the limit for them. So I would like to invite Nick, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Vocal Image, to tell you more about what they have built and what are their next plans. Nick, are you ready? You are muted. Please let me share my screen. I have some technical issues with sharing slides. It's not so easy. So ju just a second. Sure, sure. Take a couple of seconds. It seems like um, we need a technical team to be uh, close to the second group of founders so that they can help them <laughs> to play the slides. But I, I see that the slides are coming up. Perfect. Yes. So Nick, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, and I try to do my best to be in time. Hello, everybody. I am Nick from Vocal Image, and we have created a gym for your voice. Audio content is trending. Everybody noticed a massive spike of interest when Clubhouse, Telegram, Facebook, Reddit, and even Spotify launched their own voice communications networks. Clubhouse is a signal. Podcasts is a signal. And there are a lot of other signals, a lot of audio solutions for everything. Speechify, Blinkist, people are looking to consume more audio content and to produce it. Your voice earns money. How you speak is twice more important than what you speak. But people don't like the sound of their own voice. People of at least 200 professions definitely need to improve their voice to increase their success rate. And here our story is coming. We started in the end of 2018 with free YouTube channel to help people improve their voice and diction. In the end of 2020, we launched our first mobile app. And one year later, we are here with 100,000 registered users and ready to use solution. Our solution is an app to improve your voice and diction in the most effective way. We use AI to build your personal training plan so you can practice anytime, anywhere and get incredible results. Our business model is based on subscriptions and users unlock new features and additional content with premium access. And you know what? People love us. We are able to grow above 30% month over month in user base and MRR since we started. Right now, at the moment, we are the first voice training app in CIS countries. We are not stopping here. Next, we are moving to Europe. Next, to the USA. We are the first who covers all platforms, different languages, and we are the first AI-driven application for voice training. With every training, our application becomes smarter, and this increases the gap between us and competitors. This is our team, and we are geeks of our own domains. We are trusted by startup-wise guys and the great angels from all over Europe. Even Apple noticed us and invited to their private workshops for developers and OpenGS Foundation use our applications as showcases of native script as one of the best apps. We start our next round, uh, funding round in the next 12 months with the goal to get to top 100 tech apps in the USA and to reach 100k MRR in 18 months. Thank you and keep in touch. I am Nick Seo and co-founder of Vocal Image. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. So actually, you did not go over time as you have planned. <laughs> so we are good on that end. Yes, the timing was perfect. Of technical issues. <laughs> no, all is good. Okay, Jury, uh, we are ready for your questions. So um, thanks. Thanks for the presentation, Nick. And, and uh, to start off, kind of, kind of, it's still unclear to me what the actual problem is. Is it the, the, your, the, the sound coming out of your mouth, kind of the tone of your voice, or is it the way you speak and how you use pauses or, or similar? Or well, At the moment, we try to cover a um, ton of voice, diction, and articulation stuff. But in future, we are going to expand new verticals, such as speech pathologist, 
such as uh, post-stroke rehabilitation. Uh, and even right now, at the moment, we have one interesting narrow ICP. This is transgender people who switch from male to female, and they have a huge problem because it costs a lot of money, it needs surgery, they need to drink a lot of medicine to make their voice more feminized. And this is all about tuning their tone and pitch. So we try to help them. Yeah, and, and you mentioned you have uh, uh, about 100,000 uh, users users. Uh, could you describe who are they? Uh, yes, I can uh, describe some of them. For example, uh, podcasters. We have special products for podcasters. So people make a quick 10 minutes warm up before they go in on air and the diction and tone of voice become pr well prepared. Uh, we have a lot of uh, other types of audience. For example, people who speak a lot, they can be coaches, lecturers, people uh, who use their voice, uh, not like radio DJs, but in their work indirectly. For example, as me right now, I'm talking to you. I did some exercises previously, so I tried to improve a little bit my articulation and um, our AI is uh, built special for them. When you train inside our platform, our AI makes um, uh, like uh, it's understand what type of voice you have and build your personal training plan so you can we can predict what type of trainings affect in the best way specifically your voice no. and the last one from from my side that i had is that um you, you mentioned that that you can practice anywhere anytime and get incredible results so how do you measure these results uh we ask our users so this is all about the process of training our process of training is built in the next way before your user start training we ask him to record an audio then he make his training practice and afterwards he made a record again that's why we can compare first audio and second audio and understand the difference between them and this is the difference is easily can be measurable and we can predict the future results. So that's how it works. Um, all right, thanks. Uh, one question, a few two questions for me, for me, but one kind of biggest question. So one of the first slides when you described the problem said that people don't like the sound of their voices. And I'm wondering if, if this is really, and, and you mentioned like some of, some of the, the very specific groups for whom it might be relevant, but I'm wondering, is there really a, a big problem uh, for for a big group of people that would uh, justify building a, a kind of VC size company, and how have you have you validated it that this is actually a real problem? Thanks for question. It's a really complicated and huge one. So I try I try to start with the point of validation. Um, we started, as I mentioned, with YouTube channel. So we tried people to help improve their voice with free videos like courses. And we get a lot of feedback. They wanted practice, more practice. So we did not need to validate the market because market reach us by themselves. First one. And the next one, let's imagine our target group of podcasters. Everybody knows that it's trending at the moment. And for example, in USA, there are 2 million podcasters and 48 million of shows. And they are growing 40% month over month. Um, they are growing very, very fast. And um, yes, uh, we are sure that it's a huge market and it will be growing and growing and growing. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Nick, for your pitch. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for the questions. And now I would like to invite the third startup from this group, uh, which is Team Worky. So when they were accepted to the batch, uh, Worky team really wanted to be here with us on site in Vilnius for the program. Uh, however, back then in June, you know, the situation with COVID was a bit unclear. But uh, despite that, the guys have bought their tickets, uh, booked the hotels, and they were on their way to come to Vilnius. However, when they were at the airport about to board the plane, they were not allowed to do so. And all of us were so upset, you know, because we really wanted to see Worky team here in Lithuania. 
but this did not stop them. So they managed to get their vaccines earlier than planned. They booked new flights and new hotels um, and they visited us for the progress day. And actually the guys are here today in Vilnius again uh, and they will be staying in the Baltics for a while. So I'm very happy uh, that you are here. And Ihor, uh, are you ready for the pitch? For sure. Perfect. So the virtual floor is yours then. Uh, thank you very much and hello everyone. Yeah, challenges in startup life is just common stuff, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, let me know if you, can, if you can see my screen. Cool. Uh, so uh, hello everyone again. My name is Yur, I'm founder at Sweat Worky and we are back office for a freelance business. According to Forbes, 50% of global workforce in 2025 will be freelancers. And that's already happening. Right now, 10 million of full-time professionals in the US considering switching to freelance job this year. However, being manager and employee is a real challenge. You need to deal with dozens of subscriptions, fees from marketplaces, client management, accounting, taxes. Uh, what's that? As a result, that is extra 10 hours per week. That is extra 200 bucks per month. That kills productivity and kills success of your business. At the end of the day, freelancers want one single tool for their business. At Worky, we save 30% of time and 50% in fees and subscriptions to our users. We help our users with managing their back office activities by managing account and taxes, uh, invoicing and tax payments. We help our users to sell and engage better with Worky, with personal website, with booking, scanning and service offering available in a click. Our business model is subscription based. We start with individual package and we are going to launch team package for small teams from the next year. Creative economy is growing at 15% compound annual growth rate. And our addressable market in the US, this is 35 billion US dollars. For sure, we have competition on the market. However, work is different from its competitors. We help our users sell and engage better with their front end for their business. We help our users to automate their accounting and taxes and invoicing. We provide our users with full customization and full access to their money. We launched just recently and so far we are growing 40% months over months in our users. And we are going to double the trade in the next months. Most of our users are from US as we were on the US market from the day one. These are happy users that would recommend working to the network. And we are profitable from the month three according to our unit economics. Our journey started last year this year, we joined Start Workers, guys. We launched our full product and get paid users. Next year, we're going to launch Worky Teams package. Success as sales and business models teams are going to be established and continue to grow on North American market as it results to reach nine times in monthly current revenue. Next year, we're going to start focusing on B2B market, expand to Europe, and as a result, send times in monthly current revenue. Our core team is unique. We are exclusive who already worked before with each other. Myself with PwC experience and uh, business analyst product project manager in the past. Artem, our chief technical officer with his previous startup on the board. And Eugene, our product and design lead with more than 16 years of experience in the lead. We are backed by strong uh, investor. We are backed by experienced advisory team. And today we are happy to announce about our first strong partnership with the Galvanize. This is strong and big co-working space in the US in such places as San Francisco, Seattle, Phoenix, Austin, Denver, and Boulder to accelerate our growth through the uh, North America market. We start our fundraising this October to reach top five solutions for freelancers in the US and to reach 50,000 in master account revenue. We have fundraised 500,000 till the end of this year and we already have 100k committed from business angel and early stage we see. I am happy to be here with you today. I am thank you for your attention and let's automate freelance together. Thank you, Ihor. Thanks for the pitch. 
um, indeed, let's automate freelance together. So, Casper, David, do you have some questions? Yeah, so uh, now, now that you're entering the, the U.S. market uh, and you quickly mentioned a few your competitors, but uh, who, whose toes are you stepping on the most when entering that market? Yeah, uh, thank you for a great, great question. We are continuously talking to our users to understand who they are and why they are choosing working. So, so far we have the most active users such as coaches, lifetime sales business development coaches. We have health experts like therapists, psychologists, nutrit nutritionists. We have, uh, uh, we have legal experts and we have marketing and design experts on our platform. These are the most active users so far on our platform. And this is the most first wave we are focusing already. And how do you acquire users? Thank you. So we, so far, we already have two active, active channels. Uh, first of all, it's paid ads, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google, and YouTube. Also, we launched an active pretty successful in terms of organic search uh, by building content stuff that help us to, uh, to convert users organically that cost us almost zero. And uh, we also talking to, we already started today our first partnership with uh, Torque Networks, and this that will be our main focus to have not direct competition in the market by partnering with software vendors, co-working bloggers, and influencers as a third step. So, I mean, I don't know this space personally, but I would assume that since it's a rather, I mean, not a, maybe not a very simple product, but I would assume that th there's lots of other players in the market doing something sure. very similar. How do you make sure that your product is 10 times better than everything else that's out there? Yeah, thank you for your question. So, first of all, we, uh, continuously talking to our users to understand better what, they ch what challenges and pains they have. So our first unique advantage is to uh, hurt our users very carefully. And we also understand what uh, struggles uh, for creative economy, like uh, back office activities and uh, front end for their business. So we just combining that together and help them also automate the routine works, work and our competitors do not do any automation as of today. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, well, one more question. Uh, two pitches ago, we saw Contrabi. And, yeah. and, and, and do, do you feel that you're competing with them and why or why not? Uh, we can not compete, but work together, actually, because we will help the users to manage their back office routine. We will help their users to automate their invoices, automate their tax payments, if that's, that user will be from the US. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jury. Uh, thank you, Ihor, for the pitch. Uh, and this marks the end of the second group of startups that have pitched today. So thank you so much, David. Uh, thank you so much, Casper. It was a pleasure to have you here. And now I would like to invite the third uh, group of jury members who will be asking questions uh, for the remaining startups. So. First, here with us today is uh, Dominika Stankavichus, who is an associate at Launchpad Capital. Hi, hi, hi Andrew, thanks for having me. Uh, then uh, we are very happy to have Michal, uh, who is the managing partner at Lighthouse Ventures. Hi, Michal. Hi, nice to meet you. And also uh, we have Emmett King, who is the founding partner at G J12 Ventures. Hi, Emmett. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Um, so now I would like to invite the first startup in this group, uh, which is Team Benmi from Lithuania. So most founders are very passionate about their startups, but I think that few are as passionate as Irma is. Uh, Benmi definitely is her whole world, and uh, this is obvious to everyone. This passion and energy helped her uh, and the co-founder Thomas to build a solid team, to attract the first clients and to become a known player in the Lithuanian market in just a couple of months. And also during the program, they shared this energy with us by being present in the office and by being the sunshines of our office, always smiling and also walking around with their super cute dog. So I would like to invite Irma, the CEO and founder of Benmi, to tell us more about their company. Are you ready, Irma? 
Yes, I am. <laughs> Great. So I'm sharing my screen. Yes. So hello, I am Irman, the own co-founder of the Meme. Uh, and I will start about the station in our, nowadays. So today companies are competing for the best talents. And for that, they are, uh, for that, they must offer an attractive benefits uh, to be attractive, attractive like, like employers and uh, to engage their employees. However, running benefit programs are very, very uh, difficult and companies usually don't have a lot of uh, stuff and time for do, for do that uh, good. And the result, they spend more money for benefit packages and they are suggesting the same boring benefits and not, not personal benefits. How do we know that? We know from the uh, hundreds of uh, companies' data from all the Europe. 66% of companies understand that they are not suggesting benefits that employee needs. Uh, they are just 32% of companies suggesting benefits for, for all employee needs. And uh, they are not different like competitors and they are not using digital solution to, to, to manage it. If they want to make changes, yes, they, they want. 80% of companies uh, are looking for better, better communication solutions. 68% are looking for on online apps or, or softwares. 65% are looking for self-service self uh, um, solutions. And they are also wants to suggest shopping experience for their employees. So uh, we are solving that problem because we are solving, we are, uh, we are giving self-service. We are giving all marketplace, global marketplace for all, all needs. We are also managing all the invoices and suppliers. And in the result, uh, our clients, because Andres said that we have clients, they, uh, they, re they receive better engagement, less, they are spending less time for administrators, and they are saving budget. So we, we can help uh, market and we are looking for IT and finance uh, companies because they are competing the most now. And our market is huge. And about uh, our business model, we're now uh, taking seed based in pricing, but in the future we, are suggest we will suggest better prices through our system. So we will also take a uh, percent from all the budgets are spent through us. Do we have competitors? I believe that we have partners and there is a lot of good examples about partnership. So what we achieved so far, we, uh, from the MVP, we launched our company in March. From the MVP, now we're in the cloud. We finished, uh, now we're finishing second uh, program, part of those guys. Now we are four, uh, five of us and we are looking more employees and about clients. From the first client Congate in the June, now we have 15 and more clients. And I'm proud to say that our clients are also huge companies and well-known companies. Uh, team behind me, so me, I am Irma, and I have all that experience and all the knowledge how to, to, to solve the problems, what uh, HR is, are facing. And my Thomas, he made my dream come true in the product, in the me product. And also, I'm proud to have more team members who's, which is helping to, to make it uh, better and to make um, uh, our clients more happy. What we are looking for? Investment. It's now it's small investment, investment, but we are looking and for, for big investment next year. Also clients that we can help and employees. We are growing, so we need additional employees to help us and to join us. So if you're believing, uh, like our clients, clients believe in us and join our journey to, 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 to travel in our journey together. So, so recommend us and be our uh, partner also. So, and we will, we will uh, help you to do benefits better. You can book a demo. It's two weeks demo for free. And you, or you can suggest to book a demo your client colleague who is facing that problem. So that's it from my side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Irma, for the pitch. I see that the questions are already coming in. 
Uh, so Michal, go ahead. Uh, you, you mentioned many problems that your customers are facing. So what is the biggest pain that you are solving for your customers? Uh, and what was the solution they used before to, to manage uh, these uh, benefits? Very good questions. I'm, I'm answering it uh, maybe every day. Uh, so, so not answering, but helping with that question. So the biggest problem is time and employees, because now it's very difficult to find good employees and also in the HR sector, but also they need more employees in HR positions to manage all that personal needs due to COVID, due to, due to hybrid work. So this is the, the, the painful problem that they are facing now. And uh, the second part of question, could you remind me? Because I, I, I lost it. It was about... Uh, what is the current way how your existing customers uh, solve their problem? Yes, thank you. Uh, I know that in Spain, the most popular uh, tool is Excel. But we are not the worst. I know that in Germany, the most popular tool is just blank of papers. So, so we are helping because Excel didn't solve everything, and it's very difficult to manage it and don't don't uh, have a and and uh, without a mess. <laughs> if I answer a question or or yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you mentioned um, briefly when, when talking about competition that you see, you know, more as partners than as competitors. Uh, Given, I, I think, you know, there's a few platforms across Europe, Nordics, UK, also in the US that are purely benefits platforms and others that are more kind of full HR suites with benefits as a part in it. Could, could you spend a little bit more time kind of assessing how, how you see the landscape and, and why you see partnership opportunity rather than competition? Uh, yes, I know the very good examples, like example, Habob is working with Perbox because Habob also is a benefit management solution for, for HR is more, and Perbox is more for, for uh, that end user employees. So we are also now facing clients that they are using Bamboo HR, that they are using also Workday, and they are searching that solution to be friendly for their employees. And we are seeing that in the first give your employee solution like a benefit. So we are that solution and we're receiving that feedback from first day that, oh, it's nice to use, it's so simple. And it's, 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 it's very, uh, uh, I, I receiving and I'm finding all, all the suppliers that I, I want to find. So I believe that uh, don't create the solution, just bet, it's better to, to have partnerships. So because, so we are now also thinking about that, not to create also additional work day, but to, to have a partnership and stronger to the, together. Who would you say are the most direct kind of alike companies in, in other regions? Would it be like Benefi in the Nordics or, or would it be Perkbox in the UK or, or who would you say is most similar? And do you see differentiation or is it more of a geographical focus differentiation predominantly? Um, I see also working with uh, uh, Bob. they are working with Firebox, but we are, we are more. And uh, for that reasons, we are not scared to go in the different uh, um, the countries. And what is, what is success from our story that our clients, uh, that, that they have branches and they, are in, uh, they have uh, offices in Lithuania, they are saying that we need us uh, in that market. So we are not, we will go first with them and then we will try to find that fit with other uh, solutions with our other pro, pro, uh, programs or, or apps. So, uh, and I believe that we can to suggest really, maybe not the better, but maybe cheaper, maybe more flexible, maybe more personal uh, um, solution for their customers, for, for Bamboo HR customers, for Workday customers. Uh, and and I, it's everything about negotiation and about talk and open talk. And, and the result have, has to be happy client <laughs> and engage client. So Irma, if, if I can just jump in with the last question, can you elaborate why you chose UK as, as your second market? 
Now we have a client uh, which is operating in UK and in Lithuania, and they started to work with us, not just with Lithuania, also with UK. So, <laughs> so it was their need, and also we have a client in France. Now we're checking and asking our clients where you're operating, where you have branches, and do you need us there? Because for us, it, it is the best uh, decision where to go. So they choose us, and they, they took us in the UK. Okay, Irma, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, Jury, thank you for your questions. And uh, now let's move on to the second startup that is Oxus AI from Lithuania. So I first spoke with um, Mindogas when we were still running uh, our previous batch. And at that time, they were not fundraising, but we agreed to stay in touch. A couple of weeks later, I have also participated in a pre-acceleration program that they took part in. And I heard the CTO of the company, Donatas, uh, pitching the startup. And I was so impressed. I think it was one of the best pitches delivered by a CTO that I have ever heard. So I was really impressed you know, by the team, by the product, by their vision, and uh, the problem that they want to solve. So naturally, we kept on talking with Mendogas. And um, we kept on talking and talking until both of us were convinced that it makes sense for Startup Weisgas and Oxus AI to work together. So today I'm very happy uh, that we came to this conclusion and I would like to invite Mindogas, the CEO and co-founder of Oxus AI, uh, to the virtual stage. Mindogas, are you ready? Uh, hello there. Uh, thank you, uh, Andra, for a uh, for nice intro. Um, Hello, everyone. Uh, just a second. Uh, we'll switch to my slides. Okay. I hope you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, once again, uh, my name is Mindogas. I'm CEO and co founder of Oxus AI. And we help sales teams improve uh, performance by leveraging speech analytics. An important part is in any language. Just imagine uh, yourself as a sales manager and you came back from the sales meeting, uh, monthly sales meeting, uh, and you are so upset uh, because the quota is missed again, uh, like always is happening, right? And the reasons are quite unknown. So you try to, to check the CRM, but you see only the figures, but not the root causes. What, what next? You go and take the uh, fraction of the calls and try to sit down and listen to them uh, and try to extract some insights how to improve the situation and detect what was wrong. But the process, believe me, is really tedious. Uh, I tested and, and did it myself for some time. And the bigger problem is that the precious data in more than 99% of the calls have never been used for, uh, for analysis and improvement. And yet we come with a, our unique solution. Uh, Oxus AI listens 100% of the calls, analyzes them, and then gives the same actionable insights like managers do, but by scale. And what value gets the uh, customers? First of all, you can uh, transfer the best knowledge from uh, top performance to the rest of the team. You can reduce the feedback to reps uh, from two, four weeks to one day, and you can use it for any uh, language uh, of your sales team. Uh, already, we uh, validated our proprietary technology and uh, we uh, showed that we can crash the traditional methods by far, including Google. Uh, and we have a, waiting, uh, a long waiting list of customers uh, to go with file. I'm really proud to have such strong AI and business experts team behind. Myself, I'm a seasonal uh, CEO, uh, and these guys uh, have exper experience in the uh, companies like uh, Vinted, uh, Unity. I really hope that you know them. Um, yeah, about the business model, so it's an enterprise size, subscription agent, uh, 50 euros per month, and the market is big enough for us to tackle it. Of course, we have competition, but none of competitors are able to uh, provide the, the service in any language, and we do. We have some, uh, some uh, more achievements after the launch. We, uh, we raised 1 million 
um, this round uh, among investors of institutional investors, also uh, AI and industry experts. And where we are, we are proud more that uh, we've been selected as top two projects in uh, Norway grants um, because of our proprietary technology. Uh, with the uh, existing funding, we plan to reach 300 MRR next year, and then we'll be raising another round. So looking forward to meet you uh, for that. Thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, open for, for your questions. What is the biggest added value uh, of your product? Uh, because obviously there are like many speech to text uh, solutions uh, and uh, your product uh, analyzes uh, the sales calls. So, so like, uh, what, is, uh, what is your secret sauce and why you believe your yeah, product so is a player? Uh, similar uh, solutions uh, are quite popular in English. Uh, and and uh, most of them, all of them, are using speech-to-text approach. That works pretty well in English, but when it comes to other languages, it fails a lot. Um, and uh, we don't use speech-to-text approach. We use keyword spotting, and it's our proprietary technology allows us to, to scale in any language. So this is the main differentiator. And can you grab like the sentiment of the call or just a keywords because it's uh, also important part of the sales calls uh, and like uh, how much time the selling part uh, is uh, talking or listening and how much part the customer is listening and or talking yeah so uh, talk ratio and other insights from the from the voice recording so definitely we can do it when it comes to the sentiment analysis uh, so not yet um, but that it's in, in our uh, roadmap Mendogas, congrats uh, with the race. Uh, happy, happy to see that. Uh, can can you tell me what's what's your biggest weakness or risk with that one million? Uh, weakness for that one million? Uh, can you just? Uh... Yeah, I mean, what is the biggest weakness in your business model uh, to reach the the next uh, round? Let's say. Yeah. So the the biggest risk what we learned so far is uh, you know. Uh, different interpretations of GDPR uh, compliance. Um, as, as so far, what we see, our target customers are enterprises and, uh, and each enterprise has its own interpretation, interpretation on, uh, on GDPR level. Uh, another one uh, is uh, quite long um, sales cycles because our uh, annual contract value is above 100, uh, 100K. So, yeah, uh, these would be the uh, two main ones. Could you um, elaborate a little bit on, on how you've experienced those long sales cycles in terms of you know, decision makers, stakeholders and, and that process and, and also what it takes to then implement and onboard the solution with a lot of sales reps and within the organization at different levels? Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so previously, m myself, I was working in, in, uh, in industries where these long cycles, uh, sales cycles, uh, were a common thing. So I, I have some experience from, from there. Um, and, uh, uh, and when it comes, uh, can you remind the, 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 the second part of the question, please? Um, so, so the implementation and onboarding, oh, yeah. once it comes, you know, what you have to integrate with or, or how to yeah, onboard a lot of sales reps in an organization. Do you, do you take a key role in that or, or kind of how easily can the organization get up and running? Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, right now, uh, we see that implementation uh, uh, takes about uh, one and a half month. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, why we're gonna be this uh, we're gonna be using this uh, funding in order to um, improve the you know, the product and reduce this uh, onboarding uh, um, time up to one to two weeks. It's related with the integrations. Um, and uh, yeah, in the future uh, we see that it's gonna be done in in one to uh, weeks time. Okay, thank you, Mendogas. It seems like we, um, we have all the questions uh, already in. So thank you so much for the pitch. Uh, thanks for answering the questions. And yeah, Jury, thank you for, uh, 
for, for the tough questions. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, and now I would like to invite the next startup, um, which is Profina from the US. So we in our team are big fans of sport. Uh, Jana and I are running, Marius is playing football, uh, Dima currently is into tennis. So, you know, we are, we are uh, very active and we also love to track our performance. So we are using different gadgets, collecting the data and trying to make some analysis out of it. So when we heard about Profina, we thought that, you know, wow, uh, it seems like their mission of allowing developers to create apps that run on top of user health data is super exciting and something that we can relate to very personally. So we talked with the founders, we validated the value proposition with a couple of health tech startups and decided that we cannot miss the chance of working with Profina. So now uh, Marcus is tuning in from the US to tell you more about what they are building. Marcus, happy to see you here. Yeah, hey Andra, hey everybody. So thank you so much for having me. Um, all right, great pitches so far. So thank you for being with me here. Um, like Andra said, I'm over here in, in San Francisco. So I'm 10 hours in the past from you guys. But let me tell you a little bit about uh, what we're building at Profina. Um, just to add to Andra's impressive list of active accomplishments, I'm also a competitive a marathoner. And this is one of those areas where I wish that the data that I have would just work for me a little better. So that's what we're set up to solve. If you think about this situation that we have today, we have so much personal data. We have all of these smart rings, smart watches. We have all the apps on our phone. But at the same time, we don't really have an easy way of actually bringing all of that data together and making it really valuable to us. Developers actually face the same problem, but from another point of view. They also see that all this data is in different formats and different servers. Getting the data out is one thing, but making it interoperable and making it understandable without losing the data integrity, that's a huge problem. And that's something where we've had over 20,000 software developers and data scientists agree with this, this mission. So our solution to this is what we call the personal data engine, which is a framework for unifying this data into a single format allowing the individual to connect all the 360 sources that they have because they have access to more data than anybody else, as well as retaining this data on the user's side. So we can actually build apps in a way that the data never leaves the user themselves. This is how it looks. At the very top, we have the application layer. So this is where the developers build their application, companies build their apps, we build some as well. In the middle, we have this data layer which is in part an interoperable layer, but it's also an enrichment layer where we help add meta tags and calibrations and so on and so forth. And at the bottom, we have this data source layer where initially we're focused on the personal wearables that we all have. Here's a couple showcases that we've had from the community. We've let these developers go haywire. So for example, here is something that tracks your GPS points and looks at where you've been it compares the allergens and pollutions from the environment to your body's physiological response, and then it can make certain suggestions based on that. In another case where we're tracking doctor and patient burnout in hospitals, this is something that's very universal and hopefully can also prevent some of the biggest issues that they have in the hospital settings with COVID. And then we also have an application that essentially tracks driver fatigue, tells you that are you okay to drive or too tired. If you imagine the logistics pressure that we have around the world, then companies like Uber would be clamoring over something that increases driver sensitivity, driver safety without actually increasing their own data burden. We're a team that's worked together for over 10 years. Uh, we, for example, founded the world's first social media data analytics company in 2003, which was sold to Nokia in 2008. We know how to create value from data. We're also backed by over a million in funds from a couple of great venture funds like Practica and our friends here at Startup Wise Guys, as well as some fantastic angels like the guys that run data and AI for Uber, Joe Stacks, who took, um, Joe Monzo, who took uh, Apigee Public and then sold it to Google, who's actually my reseller at Google and my past company, and all these folks that see that empowering developers to build the next generation apps is the right way to go. We're currently realizing a $5 million round. We've already got two and a half million uh, committed um, and we're gonna be closing this 
essentially by the end of November. So if somebody wants to come in and have a discussion around what we can do, let me know. We've had over these 20,000 developers and data scientists get in touch, and they've helped us build a lot of these models that we've got. But we started asking them also, what's in it for them? Like, why are they coming to us? And here's the three things that they said. One, access to data is something that we need to democratize, that make it easy to build apps. Second, the developers want hassle-free data. All of these GDPR requests, you, you don't want that biting you in the ass in the future. And the third thing, which is an interesting driver, is that data with the user is the right thing to do. And that's something that we've had increasingly many developers and individuals tell us. So our mission at Perfina is to enable anybody to build on personal data in a way that we can really open up the entire data market. So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Marcus. Thanks for the pitch. Uh, Jury, now we are ready for your questions. What is your long-term and short-term monetization strategy? Yep, great question. So this is a marketplace at the end of the day. So we empower the builders to build applications. We run the payment rails. Uh, we provide the economic models and we take a couple points on facilitating those. Um, we also provide premium libraries, premium different types of ways of building apps to the builders, and then we can monetize them. I think longer term, if we're talking about way, way long, uh, we could see that we could create different types of token economic models where we could have individuals participate in different type of research using their data, for example, in pharma research, where we could split commissions and compensation based on marketplace economics. So like people selling their uh, the data and to take the cut? Uh... Um, no, we don't believe in selling data. Uh, we think that that's a slippery slope that doesn't go anywhere. Um, we believe that essentially in that setting, you could contribute your data into a centralized pool where some clinician can train an AI algorithm to, for example, detect childhood cancer in a rich data set. And something like that could be a very, very interesting uh, data set. It might sound like potato, patata, but selling data is a discussion that we don't really see a future in, but using data, really treating it as a tangible asset that's something that we see as having long-term potential. How, how do you look at, I mean, as you said, it's a marketplace, so you have you know, individual data on one side. When you have a very clear use case such as that, you know, clinical research, it feels like that's a very much easier thing to convince users to open up their data for and, and contribute to. When you when you speak in terms of a, a very broad kind of ecosystem for developers to develop based on top of personal data, what, what are the incentives or the, the trust mechanisms in place to make individuals want to share and and unlock okay. and and share their data, you know, not knowing who the developers are or what's going to be yep. developed? And that, that's a great question. That's a great question. So thank you, Emma. Let me take it back a step. Uh, with Profina, you as an individual, you can use applications with your data without ever sharing it. So you're not actually giving your data to anyone. You're just keeping it. So in a way, if you think about it, I, I often kind of think about it as like bring your own beer, but instead of beer, it's data. So the application is actually coming to you and you're running it. So this means that the developers that build these applications, they don't see your data um, and you're not actually transferring it to them. Um, so you can think of like, I, I like the super simple use case, like a developer, they took your, um, your heart rate data, and then they uh, correlated that with the Spotify songs that you listen to. And then they were able to create like race day workout playlists so that you go faster and so on and so forth. Whether or not that's a great app, I mean, I don't know, but see, people seem to like that. So it's the idea of being able to combine data seamlessly and being able to essentially build these apps, you know, in hours and then really opening up the market that it's not one app, it's millions of them. But then on the other side, it's for the individual as well, that if you can just plug the app in and power it right away without any complexity, then that becomes appealing. Okay. Marcus, okay. How, how are you going to use the 5 million uh, investment? Yep. So basically, we have over 50 different pilot apps that we see uh, as us uh, qualifying right now. Um, so those will line up our go-to-market. So that means that right now I'm, for example, spending a lot of time with them and we're only 14 people in the company. So we're going to be hiring developer relations and different customer success folks to help these cases really kind of build successful apps. 
And then of course, we have a lot to do in the actual data engineering side and the product side. So those two things, working closely with the apps that we drive to be successful, and on the other side, then really essentially making sure that we take that feedback that we get from those apps and those app developers, and then bring it into the platform just to make it even more efficient. Great. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Thanks for joining in. Uh, thank you, guys. Sending our best wishes to San Francisco. Um, and uh, thank you, Jerry, for the questions. So now I would like to invite uh, the last but definitely not least startup uh, who will pitch today, and this is Wow Health. So we started speaking with Wow Health just a couple of days before the selection bootcamp. Uh, we were preparing for a startup fair conference here in Vilnius, and I came across their name in the list of participants. I haven't heard about them before, so immediately, you know, I scheduled a call with Vitanis, uh, the co-founder of Wow Health. And uh, during that call, I have learned that it's not a coincidence that we haven't heard about them. It was the first time they have publicly announced uh, about their startup. But we clicked right away. Uh, we love the team, their vision, and their energy. I believe that they are real rock stars that will transform the way that people take care of their health. So now I would like to invite Darius, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Wow Health, to close today's event uh, with the last pitch. Darius, are you ready? Yes, I am. So thanks for the intro. Hi, we're Wow Health, an easy commitment to your health. Every year we take our cars to the service center for the maintenance check, but we don't necessarily have any problems with that. And how about ourselves and our bodies? How often do we check them precautiously? The problem here with the traditional healthcare is that they're solving problems when they're obvious. We have pain, we get diagnosis, and then a treatment. Actually, from the stats in Lithuania, I can tell that one of two who are watching now the stream will probably die from cardiovascular health problem. But the good thing is that all of this could be prevented. So why people are not using preventive healthcare? Well, it's because it's complicated. Um, complicated and private business hasn't offered a viable solution yet. Until now, we have Wow Health, and all you need to do is three steps. First, registration. Second, provide a blood sample to our partner's lab. And third, you will give results with personalized doctor's recommendation and action list in 48 hours. Our vision is to become an AI-powered preventive healthcare platform, uh, which will give you really uh, great insights uh, based on your health data, DNA, blood, blood tests, and variable device data. And actually, by using Wow Health, you can prevent 80% of chronic diseases. That's Wow, right? And why now? Uh, because laboratories have their APIs, we have AI-powered um, solutions, and users have their wearables and mobile phones where they could be accessed and coached every day. We tested with our first users during the summer, and they love it. We are now launched in Lithuania, and we're planning to go to Germany in Q2 2022. Our competitors are sending home blood test kits which has limited amount of markers could, which could be tested. And also it's painful because you need to pint your finger, fingertip. Our business model is based on subscriptions and huge margins on uh, blood tests and also upsells like supplements. We have a great team of uh, 12 people and uh, we have founders who has a great experience in IT, marketing and healthcare. And they already have successful exits. We only need one million of investment, not a support wheel, but a super heavy rocket booster, which will help us to achieve 67,000 users in Lithuania and Germany, one million monthly recurring revenue in 18 months. So don't miss out on preventive healthcare trend and join our path to Unicorn. Thank you. I'm Darius, the CEO and co-founder at Wow Health. Thank you so much, Darius. Thanks for the pitch. Um, Jerry? We are ready for your questions. Um, th thanks for the pitch. Uh, obviously, preventive health is, is super important and, and more of the healthcare system needs to move in that direction. And as you said, you know, a lot of technology and 
um, you know, products facilitate that now. I think one of the main barriers that has prevented preventive health kind of taking, taking shape faster is still the fact that even if you can present a strong health economics equation to a buyer, whether it's insurance or healthcare itself, there's still a cost to be invested kind of today to reap the rewards of preventive health five years out or 10 years out or, or whenever that will be. Have you encountered or, or how far have you come in speaking to insurance or, or other type of, of customers? And have, how have you kind of encountered that question? Because I think everybody could do the health economics equation, but there's a big budget to invest now for future yield of, of results. Yeah, so um, it's a good question. And first of all, we have a, a license. So we are an um, accredited medical institution in Lithuania. So um, uh, that helps because uh, all of our plans and, and, and blood tests uh, could be covered by the private health insurance. We already signed a deal with the biggest, probably, uh, private health insurance network here in Lithuania, Compensa Sesam. Uh, but it's really easy for us to expand and uh, sign other deals. We are just now, um, you know, focusing on other things, I would say. Uh, and it's just uh, kind of a step which would take an extra development time from our team, but it's uh, doable and, and it's possible. Now we are talking with businesses more about how to sell them the value which they could use as the company. Um, so they would see what kind of, uh, you know, health score they have in the whole company. Uh, what are the top five or top 10 health problems uh, their employees are encountering and what uh, they could do as employers uh, uh, for their employees, basically. So what's, what they can change in the environment, in, in uh, even in, you know, buying uh, healthy snacks and stuff like that. So, we are now add, adding a kind of more value for the businesses. So they would be interested more into buying our service instead of the insurance, because when you buy an insurance, you have, uh, you, are, you are a little bit blinded because you don't know where exactly the money go, goes. Uh, so some of your employees could spend on gyms, others are spending on supplements or something like that. So it's really uh, hard to measure. So, uh, but both ways are considered by us and we are trying to be in a spot where uh, we would benefit those uh, who has an insurance and those who are still kind of uh, thinking uh, maybe about having an insurance. So we would be as an option for them. Darius, I, I think you should partner with Ben Me, but that's just my opinion. Um, have you thought about the partnership uh, channels that you can sell over? Because like your subscription uh, fee, monthly subscription fee is not that high. So you need big volumes for, the, for this model, right? So um, if you are asking about channels, so there are different type of channels, of course, and different type of partnerships. We already uh, met with Irma, of course, because uh, from the same uh, cohort. Uh, and we are also talking with, uh, with companies who are selling you know, gifts uh, in a digital or physical format um, and uh, insurance companies, of course, and so on. But um, I think the, you know, kind of uh, the best way for us is to find the way how to sell um, huge uh, kind of uh, amounts or bulk amounts of uh, licenses. Uh, so there are several ways. And of course, we can partner with the clinics, we can partner with insurance, or we can partner with, uh, you know, some kind of B2C services uh, to provide our, 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 you know, blood testing and, and preventive healthcare plans. Um, so we're still kind of exploring what's the best and what, what, what works the best. Um, but yeah, definitely all of, all of what you mentioned is in our radar. All right, so Darius, thank you so much for the pitch. It's tough to be the last one, but I think that you managed to keep the energy up, so good job. <laughs> Jury, thank, thank you. you so much for the questions. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here and uh, thank, you thank you for dedicating your time. Thanks, Sandra. Thank so, you, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks. So now uh, I would like to thank all of you that have joined us today uh, to celebrate the achievements of these 11 companies. I really hope that you enjoyed hearing from them. For our investors in the audience, if you would like to talk to some of the teams that presented today, uh, please reach out to us and we would be happy to make introductions. 
But before we end today's event, uh, I would like to invite you to take a look at what those past four months have been through the eyes of the startups and our team. So once again, thank you all on behalf of Startup Wise Guys for attending today's event. I'm out. <laughs> what time is it? It's demo day time. 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 Got it. You know what I like the most about Startup Wise Guys? It's networking, great vibe, and mentoring sessions with experienced founders who are a few years ahead of us. Thank you, guys and girls. See ya. Without doubt, the people. Thanks to the SVG team and the mentors and the other founders, we are now more focused than ever. Great parties and new connections. Discover the human factor of a customer and start with teamwork is super important. It was really good to know that we are not the only startup who struggles. Fantastic wide and perfect organization. The team invested a lot of their efforts, skills, knowledges into ourselves. And we can definitely say we grew very, very strong, very, very fast from the moment when we joined Startup One Guys until now. Hello! It was the most amazing experience and the best university I could have. And how about parties? Yes, we had that. <laughs> so thank you for this wonderful journey, but also for your care, help, support, and unforgettable memories. The thing we will remember the most is the why that Startup Wise guys and the whole batch created here. So thank you all, love you all. Such a talented group of builders, visionaries, that we can't wait to build the future of the internet with support of team to find the reason of the problem and quick solution for it. Team Trifina would like to thank the entire start of Wisegas community, partners, mentors and rockstar founders for sharing your secrets of becoming the next unicorn. We look forward to celebrating our success. Brilliant mentorship. Fast learning. Amazing intros. Tasty beer in fridge. And best of the best of course are Andra, Dima, Yone, Yurgita and Marius. Thanks, 3000. The best thing about SVG Accelerator is the team. It's a single thing which makes a huge difference. And the same thing happening for your own team when you're absorbing, absorbing and getting everything inside. The past four months have been a journey like no other. I'm very thankful that you have decided to board this rocket ship that is flying to the moon together with us. By now, we have already left the Earth's atmosphere and now the only way is up. So do not sit back, do not relax, but enjoy the ride. A lot of business talks, a lot of sessions with mentors, experts, investors, uh, our team happened during the program and today it ends, but uh, it's not the end of our relationship. And you'll believe me. So we'll become friends more and more. We'll enjoy spending time together. We'll do more parties. We'll play tennis. We'll be running. We'll be sharing insights. We'll helping each other for a long, long time from now. From now. So good luck to you and stay in touch. Hey all, just remember, focus and never lose your speed. Cheers. Ambitious, inspiring, crazy and fun batch of founders. We are always here for you uh, to support you on this beautiful journey of becoming the next unicorn and reaching the stars. Love you and see you in Vilnius. So today's the day, right? It was a big privilege working with you, learning from you and being the part of this all time in the program and hustling, having fun. It was intense time, of course. Learn how to rest, not to quit. That's the last my tip. So the program is over today, but see you tomorrow, right? So see ya.